watching. I am going to make chimichurri today. Well, actually a slight spin on the traditional chimichurri, which is a meat sauce that originates in, I think, South America, Argentina sort of area. And it's a sauce made with fresh parsley. Uh, but today we're going to make it with parsley and um, cilantro. It's a really easy to make and yet full of flavor packed sauce that, although traditionally was made for use on grilled meats, it, it works brilliantly on roasted vegetables and also makes a fantastic dressing for a bean salad if you cook up, say, some pinto beans or white beans and then just mix in the chimichurri. It's a delicious, delicious salad. So. I think it's an easy thing, worth making. You can keep it for three or four days in the refrigerator and just put it on whatever you cook for an added flavor punch. And additionally, parsley is a lovely leafy green herb and parsley has lots of antioxidants. It's got vitamin C, it's got vitamin A, vitamin K. It's a, it's a great um, way to have a delicious taste and some nutrition at the same time. The first step in making this tasty, tasty chimichurri is to prepare the shallot. So just like cutting up any onion, really, just uh, cut it up pretty finely is probably the only, uh, the only thing because it's nicer to have, when you're eating raw onion or shallot, it's kind of nicer to have smaller pieces rather than big chunks. So I'm just peeling off the onion skin. Actually, this is, believe it or not, this is a shallot from our local farmer's market here where they have these really delicious kind of giant tasty shallots. So you may not be as lucky as we are to get something like this, but a red onion or a uh, if you can get a nice shallot like this, but basically any of that will be really tasty. So I'm just cutting this up pretty small. And now the next half. And then once I've done this, I'm going to put it in a bowl and I'm going to put a tablespoon of red wine vinegar and a pinch of salt onto the onion. And that kind of uh, cures the onion a bit uh, while I'm preparing the rest of the ingredients for the chimichurri. I'm just giving, because I'm not the most chef-like of choppers, I'm just uh, giving my onion an extra little chop, which probably isn't the way they do it in cooking school, but generally it works okay for me. <laughs> so now I'd say that's pretty good. I'm gonna put this in my bowl, my salad bowl. Uh, I actually have a special thing for picking up onion, which I didn't put out, but I just use, carefully use my sharp knife to get that all in there. Amazingly, the, leaving the onion in a bit of vinegar and salt for even just kind of 10 minutes, it really makes a, a huge difference to the kind of pepperiness of the onion. It kind of makes it mild enough so it's really tasty and uh, really pleasant but yet not too overpowering and oniony. Now I'm going to add a tablespoonful of red wine vinegar. This is an organic red wine vinegar. Um, just uh, really a handy ingredient to have. You can actually not only use it in salad dressings, but also put a little bit of vinegar in a tomato sauce or something like that, and it really helps to bring out flavor. So uh, for this, I put in a tablespoon into my onions that have a, 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 a nice pinch of salt in there too. And then now that I've done this, I just give it a little stir to mix up the onion, salt and vinegar. And then I'm going to just uh, leave that to one side while I go on to the next step. Okay, so next step is that I'm going to take the leaves of the parsley off the stems and the leaves of the cilantro off the stems and then I can chop them up a little bit and then I'm going to add them into the onion. So this part is a bit of a kind of uh, 
lab maybe the most labour intensive bit of this uh, sauce. It's not really uh, difficult, it's just you have to get yourself into a nice zen state of mind and just pick off the leaves. And one of the things that's uh, really nice about this part is that as you pull the leaves off, you get a delicious scent of all of the herbs wafting up into your nostrils. So that's one of the benefits of being the cook. This parsley uh, was grown just a few miles away from where we live. We try to buy our vegetables at the farmer's market and that way we feel like we're doing what we can to support local growers. Most of the people, in fact everyone who comes there is from a local farm and this particular parsley is from a farmer who is the closest to us from all of the stalls at the market. So we know it's really really fresh, uh, it's really delicious quality and also it hasn't had to travel very far to get to our plate. So in a small way we can do feel like we're doing something to reduce the use of fossil fuels in the production of our food. Obviously it's not always a choice available to everyone but if it is a choice available to you it's something to to really think about. When it comes to doing our piece to try and help with reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Thinking about the food you eat and where the food comes from is, a, is an easy first step for everyone because we all have to eat. So if you can buy locally produced vegetables, meats, dairy, that's going to be a great, uh, make a big, big difference, especially if we all do it. All our small actions added up together is a big change. So now once you've done the parsley, basically do exactly the same thing with the cilantro leaves and just pick them off the stems. And now I'm getting a lovely cilantro blast, which is really, really good. Now that I've pulled off all my stems, I've just got a great pile of fresh parsley and cilantro leaves. I basically used a bunch of each. I'm sure you could do a variation of this uh, chimichurri and just use parsley if you don't have cilantro or even try using different fresh herbs in the mix. I, I, I haven't done that yet because I've just been so enamored by the deliciousness of this uh, particular version but uh, I think one of the pleasures of this uh, sauce is that you know, it's open for experimentation. <laughs> Whatever fresh herbs you can get a hold of, perhaps it's worth trying. So now, the next step is to basically chop up all of these leaves. Um, and how finely you chop them up is kind of up to you. Do you know, do you, do you want a kind of more rustic, big leaf salad -y version, or do you want a closer to a salsa and a, a, a kind of fine chop. Um, I don't know, I just sort of don't really have a, a, a specific guideline for that. I just keep chopping until I feel the impulse to stop. <laughs> but again, it's, it's a real pleasure chopping this because you get such a flavour smell coming up into your nose with all of these herbs releasing their, their fragrance and it, making this kind of a thing really helps to motivate to, to eat your own food and cook. I mean it's, it's so delicious that it's, I don't even know that there's a restaurant out there that would even give you such a tasty salsa for your roasted vegetables. It's been kind of a journey in our house because when we discovered the deliciousness of roasting vegetables, we were so blown away by that. We kept eating them just roasted in a bit of olive oil and trying all different kinds of vegetables. And now we've discovered roasted vegetables plus chimichurri. It's kind of another whole new frontier of <laughs> flavor. So 
it seems as though when you go to the supermarket, this kind of the usual suspects and food can be a bit boring. But it really isn't true. There are so many varieties of fruits and vegetables and herbs. We don't just normally necessarily have access to them or, or think about them. But if you want to enter into an, a, a world of discovery, it's there waiting for you. And as I said before, supporting the people who produce heirloom varieties or different varieties from the, the supermarket standards is something that's only going to be good for us and for our children and for diversity and uh, so that's really the reason it brings me pleasure and motivates me to, to cook. Now my leaves have been chopped down into this uh, state. <laughs> I'm going to just finish off the simple steps of the sauce. So a tablespoon of dried oregano goes in with the onions. This is just black pepper so I give a good few twists of some freshly ground black pepper. And then this is the star I think secret ingredient that makes this really distinctive which is actually smoked paprika. So um, we just add a teaspoonful of smoked paprika. If I can get that. Mm, again, it, it smells really like, oops, barbecue sauce. A little bit more is not a problem. <laughs> One of the things I've learned with making savory foods is you don't have to be really concerned about getting the exact amount. Unlike baking, which is probably more important to uh, make sure you really measure ingredients out properly. With this kind of thing, uh, you don't, luckily, you don't have to be too worried if you accidentally dump a bit more smoked paprika in than the recipe says. So I'm just going to give this bowl a quick mix around and then I'm going to add my herbs, mix it up again. Uh, Put those in. Mm. I, the only problem with video is that it doesn't capture smell. Because if you could smell what I'm smelling, actually making my mouth water. And then I give that a little mix up again. And then the final thing I'm going to add is it's about half a cup of, of olive oil. So I'm just going to eyeball this until I get uh, what I think is a nice kind of moist um, salsa, but obviously you can measure it out if you, if you really want to. Although I didn't measure it out exactly, the amount for the recipe is half a cup of olive oil. But I just guesstimated the olive oil, and this is the consistency that about half a cup produces of the sauce. So you can see everything is coated in olive oil but it's not sitting in a pool of olive oil. That's it. I think that took me 10 minutes to make. It's so quick and so delicious. And uh, this will last, as I said, about three or four days in the refrigerator. And put it on, really, if you want a flavor bomb salsa to go on anything, it seems to work. Um, another really good thing is uh, baked fish, to have a couple of tablespoons of this on the top of your, any kind of baked fish is delicious. Um, one of the best things about this is it's made from locally produced ingredients and given all of the threats that we face including climate change and all of the other human activities on the planet it's great to do whatever you can because each individual action adds up. If you want to find out more um, please watch our newly released documentary which is called The Root Cause 
and it's available on Amazon to buy a DVD for streaming and also on Vimeo. It's The Root Cause. Thank you.